Welcome to the Pine Talk, episode 13, where we tend to squawk into our screens. Knock, knock. By all means, looking at the clock, that must be Peter with all his machines. It is I, Frank! Oh no, how did you find us? You underestimate my power, young men. I know your family and relationships. The schools you've went to, the items you've bought, courts you've had, shows you've watched, and the things you've searched. But I use free and open source software and hardware. H- how could you possibly... <laughs> you naive boy. Are you telling me that you've gone full Stallman? I, uh, I, no, but... But nothing! You still use plenty of non-free software and services for your convenience. Or should I say, for my convenience. (laughs) 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 Got one, sir. Shut up. You'll never get away with this. I already have. I know Peter will show up any second now to start your little podcast, The Pine Talk. Oh, how cute. Oh, hey, Ezra. I was thinking that this episode we'd talk about... Peter, watch out! What the hell is going on? There's no time to explain. Step on it! Damn, he's hot on our tail. You'll never outrun my fang mobile. But... What about the podcast? We'll have to do it in the pine car. I'm sure Nerd Zoom Media will be able to fade out the background noise with some noise reduction. Alright, let's hook everything up to the Pinebook Pro. Everything is set up. Let's do this. I am Peter, your Flatpak Manifest Amateur. And I am Ezra, content creator who's released a game. Welcome to the 13th episode of Pine Talk. The podcast for the Pine64 community by members of the Pine64 community. In this episode, we'll be discussing the July community update and some of your questions. Quite a lot of them, actually. But first, What have you been up to lately? Well, I've made an open source point and click adventure game available as an app image. The link will be uh, in the show notes. It's a fan game for the Televoid web series created by Bruno Moose, which I also suggest giving a watch if you feel so inclined. Otherwise, I installed Pup OS 2104 with System76's new cosmic desktop environment based off of GNOME. Uh, I made a video about it. Uh, I had to do that because Fedora was giving me some some slight uh, technical issues. So I thought I'd take uh, the opportunity to check it out. What about you, Peter? I didn't play with new distributions. I've just been trying to find the time to do another video or blog post, but failed. Mm. (laughs) Miserable until right now. So, um, yeah, uh, at least I kept my update going. Um, But I may have more soon, so not all hope is lost on that front. Um, I've also been creating a Flatpak Manifest file for all of you who are interested in having the hardware accelerated video playback we talked about last episode, but we'll talk about l- that later in this episode again. So let's get to it now and just start the episode with the <laughs> app of the episode. And my ultimate pick, the pick for this episode, is Image Roll, an image viewer with basic image manipulation tools, so like rotating and stuff. It's written in GTK and Rust and starts quite fast, and you can get it from FlatHub. It's the best image viewer I'm aware of for Fosh. On Platform Mobile, I would recommend Maui's Pix, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> we'll include links uh, to ImageRoll's repository and its FlatHub page 
in the show notes. But let's get into it now and discuss some community news uh, where we only have one item this time, the Pint64 July community update. It starts, as usual, with housekeeping, and this time housekeeping is all about Pine64 Dev Zone, a new portal for developers. It's still in early development itself, but the purpose is clear. Managing the growth of active contributors to Pine64's project. For Pine64, this is about getting an overview of active and prospectus community developers, their interests, experience, and history of contributions, and getting a better understanding of the community development pool and available talent. This should help with better distributing development units to, into the community, which is especially important in times of scarce resources as with the current component shortage. So if you are a developer and interested, register now. Keep in mind, the dev zone is currently under construction and there's no clear time frame for launch according to the community update. But if you're interested, then Lukas encourages you to register today and Pine64 will get back to you once the system is online. Otherwise, we have some Pine Time news. Let's start with the really good news for those waiting for to get their hands on a Pine Time, which is that production of the new batch is going well and If everything goes to plan, single-sealed units should be available by the time you hear my beautiful voice. These Pine Times are flashed with the latest version of the bootloader and InfiniTime, so so that you'll be able to get the most out of your watch the moment you receive it. The update has a section on InfiniTime development and the 1.2.0 release, but we mostly discussed this in the last episode already. What's new is that they are already working on the next release that will bring, among other things, a new stylish watch face. Otherwise, the oddly named Wasp OS has seen a few improvements merged recently in the form of an oddly or an early sports app which currently lacks aesthetic polish. A watch face chooser, which shows a full screen preview of various watch faces to let the user decide which one to use, new icons, and bug fixes. So, a lot of good things are in the works for Wasp OS. Furthermore, a pull request has been created that aims to add an advanced alarm application, much more featureful than the existing alarm app. Finally, Let's highlight a newcomer in the world of Pine Time firmwares, Malia, by Martine de Jong, RT, online. Um, Martin has, uh, has previously been working on UI designs, a flasher app, and a GDK companion app for Wasp OS. His latest project, Malia, is no less than a fully featured firmware for the Pine Time based on Riot OS. The project is still at its beginning, but it looks really ambitious and promising. For now, Martin is focusing on the display driver and the font rendering. Ultimately, Malia uh, sh- should look like the designs Martin Martin uh, is working on in his uh, Pine Time OS project. Let's wish Martin be- uh, best of luck with his project. Good luck, Martin. That sounds like quite a project. Indeed. Let's go on with something I'm more familiar with than uh, Riot OS. I didn't remember that. Uh, that was a thing, but let's continue with the Pine Phone keyboard. You've probably heard of it too, right? Mm -hmm. So those who've already read the previous community update blog entries will know that Pine64 have created two prototype iterations and have been ironing out existing issues these past three months. 
At this moment, they've incorporated most of the developer feedback concerning the keyboard's electronics, chassis refinements, including fit and finish, and fine-tuned the membrane that determines the feel of keystrokes. There's now also a fully open firmware for the keyboard thanks to Megi, which Lukas is happy to report will ship with the keyboard by default. As you can probably tell, the keyboard is very close to being production ready. However, Pine64 recognizes the importance of this peripheral and therefore also wants to get it right from the get-go. So they've decided on creating one last run of prototypes for evaluation prior to production. A final stretch, so to speak. This way they can also incorporate any last minute tweaks which developers suggest. Granted, everything goes according to plan and no issues are found with the final pre-production units. They will start production immediately. In other hardware news... Final pre-production back cases for the PinePhone have just arrived from the factory. The fingerprint reader and wireless charging modules will be fitted into the cases and undergo testing. If it turns out that both functions are as expected and they can source the necessary components, then you can expect them to enter production shortly. The LoRa run or the LoRa back case will have to wait a little longer as Pine still needs a developer to bring up LoRa chips functionality over the I2C protocol. At any rate, we may see these two initial back case configurations introduced at some time at the same time as the Pine phone keyboard. In other words, very soon. So stay tuned. Now let's continue with PinePhone software. The big software news of this month is that the PinePhone is now capable of accelerating video playback. The device has, at least technically, long had the possibility of doing hardware accelerated video playback using the mainline Cedrus Media Driver demonstrated last year by Miggy, which renders video using the Allwinner A64's onboard video processing unit, not to be confound- confused with the GPU. Shown once again this year by Brian Daniels, not only is it possible to get smooth hardware accelerated video playback using GStreamer in the command line, but it's also possible to write applications that can utilize GStreamer and its hardware decoding, such as in the case with the new Clapper video player. The PinePhone can output 1080p at 30fps with ease using acceleration, exceeding the native resolution. This is, however, something that may prove useful for those seeking to dock their Pine phone for convergence. In order to get video decoding working, at least for now, you must build GStreamer manually. However, once this works, uh, uh, once this work comes with the next 1.2 stable release of GStreamer, you can expect distributions to start utilizing hardware accelerated video decoding out of the box. We will link Brian Daniels' two blog posts on the topic in this episode's show notes. We also discussed the first one last episode, but the way Clapper works now is really cool. Raffostar, the developer of Clapper, did a great job here. If you want to try this, but not mess up your slash user slash local, I put together a Flatpak manifest, which you can build with Flatpak-Builder. A link to that will also be included. It should work by now. It didn't at first. In other news, Dank12 has put out an Arch Linux ARM OS image featuring Plasma Mobile. It joins the existing se- selection of po- the popular Fosh build and barebone Arch Linux installation already available for the PinePhone. We'll put a link to where you can download it. Aside from the addition of Plasma Mobile, DNI has made a pull request to the repository of Arch Linux ARM, which adds SXMO as a UI option. We hope to see SXMO up and running soon, 
and a new OS image featuring this UI released by the end of July. Lastly, the community build of Arch Linux Arm has fixed a high priority security vulnerability last month. Make sure to update your device if you have not done so recently. <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> I didn't up update for quite a while. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know, man. I do. Well, you know, when your phone runs out of batteries, it's not as much a security threat, you see? That's right. Not, nonetheless, the post-market OS build for the Pine phone has also seen a number of improvements. The biggest one being the recent version 2106 stable release based of Alpine 314, bringing updated software for users on the stable branch of Post Market OS with Fosh 0.11 and Fosh 0.12 in Edge. The Post Market OS build for the Pine phone also received quick, quick suspend slash resume support for the modem. Uh, for those running the Edge branch. This should increase the reliability of calls and mobile data on the phone. Regarding Fosh 0.12, let me briefly mention that it has a noteworthy feature, listing only mobile-friendly apps. This just requires the addition of one custom line to desktop files, which has not happened for every GTK app, and with Qt apps, or Kirigami apps, the situation is even worse. I will have written a short blog post about how you can fix this on your own by the time this episode airs, so that you can make proper use of the feature. List all the apps you want on the go, and list those that you only run rarely or in convergent settings, and that is your use case. Going on with our favorite new Pine single board computer, the Quad 64. Quad 64 Model A is available in the Pine Store and shipping to early adopters, so the focus is on software this month. For that, Lukash got in touch with PG Vibart, who laid the foundations for mainline Linux on the RK3566 system on a chip used in Quad 64. The current status is as follows. The official device tree has now landed in mainline Linux alongside a number of nodes. One key bit presently missing but in development is the VOP v2 display driver that will allow for display output. Also missing are the audio driver, e-ink, and battery charging support. The audio and battery charging functionality will take time, but are likely to be incorporated into the Linux kernel in a timely fashion. While e-ink display functionality, on the other hand, is likely to prove a major challenge and will take longer. From an end-user's perspective, the display and audio drivers are obviously the most important in terms of usability. And there is a fair indication that both will be the first of missing of the missing pieces to be added. For those of you who wish to contribute to development at this early stage, there are now multiple operating systems to toy around with. PG Wipeout has made a build root recovery image as well as a Debian installer, both of which pack all available functionality and use commits. And also, since earlier this month, Quad64 is also able to boot Manjaro Linux, which features the same kernel and patches, and therefore also all the currently available functionality. We'll have a link to the current Quad64 development status in the show notes. The community update also has news regarding the Pine DO, Pine64's range of LoRa products full of alphanumerical ship or product names. We just suggest you to read this on your own for full wireless mesh networking enjoyment. Generally, make sure to read the full update. We skipped a few things here and there. So let's end community news and continue with community engagement. <laughs> Which we've got quite some listener questions this episode. We asked 
on Twitter and Mastodon and got lots of questions. If you want to leave feedback or ask questions to be discussed here, you can join the Discord channel Pintalk-Podcast on Pine64's Discord. You can send us an email at pintalk at pine64.org and tweet or tweet at us. We are at TalkPine on Twitter and at TalkPine at Fosterdon.org on the Fediverse. If you can't remember these names, just use the hashtag AskPineTalk. Also, and this is new, we now have a thread for feedback and questions on the Pine64 forums. Well, it's not new, but it still feels new because it's quite empty. <laughs> it's in the community section and will be linked in the show notes of this episode. Now, let's tackle the first question. Frank Mankell tweets, Status of Quartz 64 Model B, please. Well, uh, we don't have news in this community update, and the June community update said the following. In the coming month, you will see us introduce the Quartz 64 Model B, a physically smaller board, sharing the same footprint of our Rock 64 computer. <clears throat> now, uh, yeah, just being mere community members and mortals without further information, we would guess that, especially because of the ongoing component shortage, which, according to some experts, will get worse before it gets better. Uh, yeah, long story short, all we can tell you is be patient. One day, Model B will land, and that waiting won't hurt, given the current software status. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, right now it's not ready for the majority of users anyway. So um, putting it out there when one unit is available, I think, doesn't put much harm. But, yeah, it's always feels bad to have to wait, right? So I, I get that. Mm -hmm. Same on your point, your side, mm -hmm. Ezra. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's continue with the next question. Um, oh, number of Asian characters, Grillchen, tooted. Mm, I would be curious if an upgrade to the Rock Pro 64 is planned already, and if it would have an EDP port. That's, I think, embedded display port. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because the Rock Pro 64 has still no Linux image which works with the EDP port. Do you think it is lack of interest from the community or something else? Again, we're not part of Pine64, so we don't know plans. Regarding Rock Pro and EDP port support, we sadly can't help either. I don't think it's necessarily a lack of interest, but also the general complications of doing that. So there's your answer. <laughs> Ravlix wrote to us from mastodon.social. They say, I would really like to hear stuff about China. They invest into open source. Most of our tech comes from there. They're good with robotics. Shenzhen seems kind of cool. Is open harmony desirable for the Pine phone? Is there anything we could use or learn from from them? I think that's true for you too, but I've never been to China, and I guess you haven't either, Ezra? Nope. Yeah, so we've never been to China, but there's definitely a lot of cool stuff happening there. China is no longer the global workbench for others. They've stepped up the game. Mm -hmm. um, open Harmony... That's really complicated. I really haven't wrapped my mind around it yet fully. It seems to be multiple things uh, from embedded to smartphones and on smartphones. It's mostly like another AOSP fork. Not sure uh, what it really is. I've mostly heard rumors and I didn't have a look at the code. Um, so... It's a project spearheaded by Huawei and the Otem Open Atom Foundation. It can work on Linux and, or a so-called light OS kernel. 
and we'll just link a Fostum talk on the topic by someone who's involved with Open Harmony, which should say way more about it than we possibly can. I actually watched that talk before, but I sadly don't remember much. Oh, how unfortunate. Yeah. Well, Ravlix also asks, uh, and are there any plans for a Pine Phone Pro? Well, uh, uh, we don't know. We're just people, you know. <laughs> We're not insiders to that degree. Uh, but we would love it, I think, uh, if it were... There were some plans for that, unbeknownst to us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's continue this quick run and continue with the next one. And CyberCow, 31st. I made up that word, by the way. Mm -hmm. What's the current state of the different distributions for the Pine Phone and how stable are they? No idea. Frankly, is, well, especially stability is something that requires a lot of time to assess, <laughs> unless it's really bad, which I would know considering that uh, my open source point and click game crashes quite a lot on Windows, yet not at all on Linux. So <laughs> it can be quite, quite the conundrum. And it depends what you want to do or what you want to use your Pine Phone for and with. There have been uh, weird carrier issues here and there uh, that only affected one distribution, but not other one, but not another one, and so on. You know, some, some carriers work on some, not on others. Yeah, that's definitely the situation. Um, I agree. Um, in my experience, at this point, it's sadly still... Um, Generally, stay with Fosh or maybe use SXMO if you want to break all your smartphone muscle memory. <laughs> Plasma is getting there, but for me, it's not quite there yet. Arch Linux Arm with Fosh is what I use, and I've been using it for a long time and didn't break on upgrades or something. Uh, so that's something to say. Uh, Postmark OS is quite good, and so is I hear Banjaro Fosh. I liked OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but I didn't use it for longer, so I can't quite say same about Fedora. Although, yeah, using RAW, it feels like breakage incoming. Um, I hope that Debian 11 is out soon, so that Mobian does no longer suffer from Debian's freeze. And I can wholeheartedly recommend it again, so I think... We talked about this before, and those are basically the same distros we've been recommending previously. And they're still good. And yeah, maybe try Plasma still, just because I'm a naysayer and so used to Fosh. I may <laughs> just be wrong there. Let's continue with an older question, unless you've got anything to add to this. No, no, I would say that that's... I saw what I had to say. Good. Okay. So Sarigama at Oily Thanks on Twitter <laughs> asked a while back. My cue will be is it likely that Mobian dash SXMO EIMG or Manjaro dash SXMO dot IMG may come out in the near future? Ezra, do you have anything? Um, well, we're not insiders, but so I, I don't know what to say about the word likely, but um, you know, so Manjaro is it, Manjaro is somebody who enjoy or is a distribution that likes having multiple ports to things. If it's not official, it's community based. So I, out of the two that I see here, I would think to see a, Man, a Manjaro exit SXMO in the near future, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, for me, it's uh, basically a clear maybe, maybe not from my side. So uh, maybe just ask those projects 
Yeah. People involved yeah. with them get into the chat rooms, ask there. Maybe someone is working on it and we don't know. But uh, asking us. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I'm not even sure whether I would notice it. There <laughs> suddenly was a Mobi at SXMO without announcement on mm -hmm. a blog or Twitter. But yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all we can say to that one, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's have one last one. Petrish wrote on Mastodon or social.libram1 to be precise. Maybe you could talk once about the background of Pine64. I mean, not much the community, but more the company. CEO, if there is one. And employ employee citation etc. Well, uh, this is something we've been asked before. Being just community members, answering this on our own would not be of much use. I think you can read too, and us reading us stuff doesn't really help or add value. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe there'll be an interview with Lukas or someone else from Pine64 that can give a competent answer to this after the break to tackle this question properly. Uh, hashtag future homework. <laughs> so uh, we'll link another podcast that might answer this somewhat in the meantime. Um, I listened to that in March, but I don't remember anything of it. So yeah, try listening to that uh, and have fun with it, but uh, don't uh, Blame me if there's nothing in there. <laughs> okay. Good. But I said break. Yes, a break. Uh, the podcast will be back in four weeks, hopefully, after a short summer break. I, Peter, am stepping down for personal reasons, so I won't be back. A close family member is quite ill, and thus I really needed to adjust my priorities. There's not much I can do, of course. I'm no medical doctor or anything. But I feel the need to at least try to be there, to be available mentally. But I need to let go of some of my free time activities. As you may have noticed with less videos and stuff. So for the podcast, I think some fresh energy, new minds and ideas always help to improve things further. So I'm hopeful there. Thank you, Ezra, for doing this with me and for all the fun we had. Thanks to Lukas from Pine64 for the opportunity and the kind and valuable feedback and discussions we had. And last but not least, thanks to you all, loyal listeners, um, that you didn't make fun of me for my often or sometimes not too great English. And all the time you spent or wasted on listening to this. So I'm really leaving with a tear in my eye. But this was one of those situations where you can only choose between not great options. And leaving feels like the right option under the current circumstances. I, I can 100% agree with you that you're doing the right thing. Thanks. <laughs> I'm also stepping down for two not so great reasons. Step one or reason one, I I'm lazy. And for those who might not know, Peter <laughs> does about 75%, if not more of the work. I write poems. And ah, that's not true. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I do things sometimes, but. Um, I also tend to, uh, overboard myself with my personal projects. Uh, like, you know, I, I was often talking about a game I was working on. That was a three year long project and I'm already working on a, on some new projects too. So uh, I, I distract myself, but I am happy that I partaked in this podcast to get the experience and to inform at least a little bit, um, about something that I really like, which is Linux and Pine64, 
And I'm really, as Peter was saying, I, I just the same. I'm very happy and thankful for everybody who listened, for Lucas, for giving me the opportunity to partake. And, you know, like maybe I'm not leaving for, for good reasons, but I think, or what's more poetic than both of us stepping down at the same time to leave room for a new generation of pine enthusiasts to take the stand. Otherwise, it's been quite the adventure indeed. So we'll see what new adventures lie in the future. And I, I really enjoyed our fun time together, Peter. Oh, me too. It really was. We had quite some jokes always before we, uh, while we were preparing these shows and before we recorded and then during it, sometimes we took too long and we would <laughs> record it, I don't know, like 1 or 2 a.m. my time in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. but yeah, that was fun. Uh, Real fun. And that's it for this episode. So thanks again for listening. If you are subscribed to our MP3 feed, check out once again if you haven't done it <laughs> after being told 13, 12 times before this. <laughs> uh, check out those chapter markers if your podcast client supports it, that is, or on our website or in the videos. These can be handy if you vaguely remember something we may have talked about and want to find it again, or if you find a segment really boring and want to skip it. If you don't need these chapter markers, save some bandwidth and use Peter's beloved Opus version. Once more, a huge thanks to NerdZoom Media for being an awesome audio producers. They have their work cut out for them this episode. Keep feedback and questions coming as always. They'll surely be addressed and answered in Season 2. Until then... Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we did it, but Fang's still hot on our tail. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide now. Quick, take a right down copy left lane. Oh no, you're not escaping me this time. I think they are trying to hide between all the community and the streets, so we have less jurisdictions for where they can or cannot go. Not if I can help it. Hello, yes? Hello, Susan? I would like to buy Open Source City. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Yes, all of it. Can you arrange that for me? Oh, thank you so much, Susan. You're such a sweetheart. And once that done, close Git Highway. Aha! Hey, guys! If you want to continue using these streets, you must accept my new terms and conditions. What is he talking about? I own all the streets here now. I just bought them. So accept my terms or get off my streets. Oh, what to do? Maybe we could make it to the lab in Foxland. Oh yeah, maybe someone there could help us. That's our best shot. Let's do it. What? Where are they going? If I were to guess, they are off to the lab in Foxland. I can't imagine where else they'll go. Ah, after them! We are almost there. Good. I don't think Fang is tracking us anymore. <laughs> they don't think I'm tracking them anymore. What a perfect time to strike. Well, I wouldn't be so sure, sir. We don't want to pop up and stretch them into giving. You better give me your information or else. Oh my gosh, he's right there. Pedal to the metal, Peter. I'm going as fast as I can. <laughs> Wait, where are they going? If they go any faster, they'll crash into a lab. My computer AI says so. Guys, slow down. What are you doing? You will crash and your windows will shatter in your face. We're trying to escape from you. Well, what happened? You didn't listen to me, that's what. You idiot! Now we'll never get the information. Hey, I didn't want to kill them and I didn't become a multi-billionaire by being an idiot. 
I worked hard building up multiple companies from nothing. Not to mention my multiple bachelor degree. And that as it is, our friends are gone. This is what concludes Season 1. But a new cast of heroes are sure to arise as Fang's plans keep close eyes. After a short break, Time Talk will return. Season 2 will be great and hopefully give what you yearn. Hear them squawk on the next season of Time Talk. They'll share their stock of information to keep you up to date around the clock. 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 Clock.